بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The Sunni version I quoted was basically four uh, versions of it, of this statement. And this has been quoted by Sahih Muslim, Sahih Ibn Habban, Majmu al-Zawahid of Haythami, Majmu al-Awsat, Mu'jam al-Awsat of Tabarani, and Musnad of Ahmed bin Hanbal, and Mustadrak of al-Hakim and Nishapuri. These are all famous Sunni compilers of Hadith. And the four versions that they have, one is man mata wa laysa fi unuqihi bay'atun mata meetatan jahiliya. Whoever dies and doesn't have the bay'at on his neck, means he doesn't have this burden of the pledge of allegiance, then his death is death of kufr. The second version says man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi mata meetatan jahiliya. Where is exactly the way we have in our Shia books. That whoever dies and doesn't know the Imam of his own time, then his, his death will be of kufr and jahiliyyat. Third version, وَمَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْهِ إِمَامٌ مَا تَمِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَةً A person who dies and there is no Imam on him. He doesn't believe in an Imam. His mouth is of kufr. مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ إِمَامٌ here, in the earlier version, it says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِمَامٌ There's a slight change in the words. مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ إِمَامٌ A person who dies and doesn't have an imam, مَاتَ مِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَّةً He will die the death of kufr. Now, when you look at this, you come to realize, okay, Shias and Sunnis, at least on the concept of this bay'at of the imam of the time, agree on it. There is no dispute. Then we hear the objection that, oh, the Sunni version also are weak. MashaAllah, this, you know, judgment so loosely used about anything that they don't, don't like, oh, it's za'if. That even the Sunni, uh, you know, hadith, the asnad are za'if, especially the one of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal in Musnad. But he is not the only source. If there are other sources which are accepted by the Sunni, you know, standards of hadith, then collectively you will ac accept that. For example, you know, this is the problem, you know, the hasty judgment in discarding the hadith, whether it is from Shias or Sunnis. The four versions from the Sunni, that are, uh, Sunni sources that I quoted, the first one, man mata wa laysa fi unuqihi bay'atun, this was the first version. This has been verified by the top most, you know, scholar of the science of hadith of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah of this century. There is a scholar who died in 1991, Sheikh Muhammad Nasir Din al Albani. He was more a Wahhabi than anything else, but not an extreme Wahhabi. Highly respected by the Wahhabi scholars. One of the muftis of uh, Wahhabi who died recently, he used to actually call him Bukhari al Asr. Means Sheikh Albani is the Imam Bukhari of our time. Among the Sunnis, Imam Bukhari is, is the to top as far as hadith is concerned. Sheikh Albani has many, many books in which he classifies the ahadith of the earlier scholars saying this is za'if, this is sahih, reliable, not reliable. And, you know, he has his own, own, his own books where he has compiled the books, uh, the ahadith that he considers to be sahih. One of his books is Salasalatul Ahadith al sahiha means the series of the authentic ahadith. And in that, in the second volume, page 677, he quotes this first version of the four versions of the Sunni uh, hadith about 
man mata wa lam ya'rif imama zamani and he includes that in silsilat silsilatul ahadith as-sahiha in the series of the ahadith which are sahiha and authentic the third version which is man mata wa laysa alayhi imam mata mitatan jahiliya this actually has been narrated by a Sunni scholar of Hadith even before Imam Bukhari. And this is um, Ibn Asim, Ibn Abi Asim, who actually lived before Bukhari, before Kulaini, and he has a book known as Kitab Sunnah. A new version of his book has been uh, pre printed with. Uh, notes and annotations of Sheikh Albani, whom I mentioned earlier. And there, under this hadith, Sheikh Albani writes very clearly, Isnaduhu Hassan wa rijaluhu siqat. The sanad of this hadith is good, and the narrators are reliable. So after, out of these four versions of the hadith of the Sunnis, according to this expert, of the Sunni scholar, uh, Albani, two, two of them are considered to be sahih. So this arbitrary statement that, oh, it's not supported by the Sunni scholars, no, you know, this is just, um, you know, a statement not based on facts at all. Salawat <laughs> And the final point. You know, these people who would like to reform us, they say, well, if you go and ask the Sunnis, what is the meaning of this hadith? Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi. That if somebody dies that doesn't know the imam of his time, this fellow says that, oh, it means, the Sunnis say that it means Rasulullah. So it is about doing bay'at of Rasulullah. Now, come on, even Sunnis wouldn't accept that explanation. Even Albani, in the commentary of this, uh, one of these hadiths, he says, you know, somebody who doesn't have the bay'at of Khalifa of the Muslimin. We're talking about the Khalifa or the Imam. We have dispute about who, but this hadith is very clear. It is not talking about Rasulullah. It's talking about bay'at of the Imam of the time or the Khalifa of the time. On a practical level also, this hadith was used for the bay'at of the khalafa, not for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salawat pranayak barah. Yes, the sahaba did the bay'at in Hudaybiyah, in Fatih Makkah, in different situations. But this ayat which says man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi is referring to the leader of the time. Sunni says khalifa, we say it is the imam appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, among these uh, narrators of this ahadith from the Sunni books, we have Abu Huraira, we have Muawiyah, we have Abdullah bin Umar and many others. Abdullah bin Umar is a very interesting character in history. This is the son of the second Khalifa, known as a very reliable source of knowledge among Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. See how he imp implemented this hadith in his life. After the um, events of Karbala, the Umayyad uh, dynasty, there was a change in there. Ali Abu Sufyan came to an end because of Karbala. After Yazid, his son, you know, didn't even survive more than six months and then he's just abdicated. And so Marwan became the Khalifa after Yazid. When Marwan died, his son, Abdul Malik bin Mar Marwan became the Khalifa. The news reaches Medina at night time. Those days, people didn't go to visit one another or official business at night time. It would be done 
during daytime only. Abdullah bin Omar, when he heard the news that, oh, the Khalifa has changed and it is now Abdul Malik bin Marwan, Marwan has died. At night time, he goes to the governor's house. And who is the governor? Hajjaj bin Yusuf, this Mal'oon who was known to be, you know, he has high level of hatred towards Ali Ali and the Shia of Ali. He killed many, many of them in Iraq. And he was the governor in Medina at that time. So the governor asked him, you know, what is the urgency? What happened that you come to me at night time? He says, well, Hati Yadik. Abdullah bin Umar says, give me your hand. Uba'yu'uka li amir al-mu'minin Abdul Malik. So that I pledge my allegiance on your hand for Abdul Malik. Why? What is the urgency? You could have come this, you know, tomorrow morning. Abdullah bin Omar says, I'm worried. What happens if I die? And I've not done the bayat. He says, فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ I have heard the messenger of Allah saying, مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ بَيْعَةُ إِمَامِ A person who dies and doesn't have the bayat of the imam on him, فَمَوْتُهُ جَاهِلِيَّ Then his death is a death of Jahiliya. Abdullah bin Umar, the ravi of this hadith in the Sunni sources, is not applying this hadith on Rasulullah. He is using this and applying it on Abdul Malik bin Marwan. And he is so much worried that, you know, maybe if, if I die, what will happen to me? I don't want my mouth to be both Jahiliya. And this is where we have to realize that this hadith is authentic. It has power in it. And people in the early days were worried about it. So don't try to say, oh, this is all is fabrication of the Mughali and this and that. But coming back to Abdullah bin Umar, what does Hajjaj do? He was Mal'oon, really. He says, Yadayi anka mashgula. I don't know if he was eating or doing what. He says, well, I'm busy. Both my hands are busy. I will not extend my hand for you to do bayat for Abdul Malik bin Marwan. He says, well, walakin hadha rijli. You know, my feet is here. Take it. Do bayat on that. And mashallah, Abdullah bin Umar does bayat on the feet of Hajjaj for Abdul Malik bin Marwan. And so, you know, at least this story tells us that this hadith had its own practical implication in the early history among the Shias as well as among the Sunnis. Salawat